Hi, it's Ryan from Ryan Fowler Photography, and in this video, I'm so excited to be sharing with you this, the brand new Nissi V6 filter holder. What they've done with this is they've taken the V5 and listened to what photographers liked about it and what they didn't like, and adjusted it and adapted it to create this, what they've got now, and will be releasing by the time that you're watching this video. So I'm going to do a very quick unboxing for you and then rather than you listening to me talk in the studio the whole time, um, I'm actually going to show you a couple of the features and then I'm going to actually take you outside and we're going to do a couple of shoots where you can listen to me talk to you outside. Um, so inside the box we have the manual. Um, this is the brand new V6 lens cap. Um, I will show you a little bit more about that in just a minute. And here we have the redesigned filter holder bag, which is a new nice soft case. They've kept that little brown leather touch. Um, but the biggest thing is this. This is the tripod mount. So on the other filter holders, um, for example, this one, which is the one that I've been using for a long time, they've got this little piece on here which is a, a clip. It's very heavy duty, very strong. You've also got a waistband bit through there um, and I've just been attaching this to the base of my tripod but it's never really been hugely functional in, ter in terms of using it with a tripod unless you're wearing something with a belt or something you can clip it to. So this tripod mount just lets you literally velcro it to the, to the side of your tripod and stay there which is really great. And it's also got a nice strong Velcro lock on it as well. So inside here, now these do come inside a pack, but um, the first video didn't work, so they're now outside of their bags. You've got the Enhanced Landscape CPL, and then you've got the filter holder with the 82 millimeter adapter ring, same as the V5, or very similar. And then you've got your three adapter rings that come with it. So the 67, 72 mil, and 77 mil. And they all sit inside this bag. Um, you've got the adapter ring slot, the filter holder slot, and then you've got the CPL slot in here as well. So I'll just put those inside because uh, you probably don't need to see too much about those right now. But the redesigned bag is very nice. And now let's have a look at this, the filter holder. So we have got what looks very similar to the V5, but it has some really, really great improvements. So, I've got my V5 here with the filter holder and adapter ring, and you can see the size difference. They've refined it, it looks a lot, it looks a lot nicer personally. Um, they've refined it so it's smaller, but it still takes the filters that you know and love inside of the 100mm Nissi system. Um, these little slots, there's still three slots for filters plus you've got the CPL integrated into the um, back of the filters rather than the front. Same as the V5 and the same scroll wheel design to shift the polarizer on both as well. With these three slots though they've been designed so that it's actually easier to get your filters in and out without them sticking or jamming or just having to put a bit more force on them and they're still incredibly sturdy, so they're still going to keep your filters nice and safe. And on the V5, you can see just this one little pull tab, and if I pull that, the 82mm adapter ring comes off, and you can use the polarizer there. But on this one, we now have two pulls. So they've redesigned the locking system so that this 82mm um, filter adapter fits in a bit tighter and stronger. So still single pull that out and the uh, adapter ring comes off, filter holder detaches. But I'll put that back on and let me just get a medium grad filter here. So this is the Nissi Four Stop Medium Edge Grad Filter. I'm just going to slide that inside of there. Now you can if you don't know what a grad filter does, it darkens at the top and leaves the bottom clear for sunrises, sunsets, when you've got a really high dynamic range in terms of a bright sky and a darker foreground. So, for example, if your camera is looking directly at you, for example, and I needed to offset 
the actual angle of the graduated filter. There might be a big rock or a headland or something that you just don't want darkened too much, but you still need to darken most of the sky. So that can be offset to whatever angle you like, but if you've been a little bit clumsy, sometimes I have, um, it's not very fun when you accidentally hit your filter and it completely just takes it off angle. What you can do is if you're on an odd angle, that's a bit of a tongue twister to get out, you can actually twist this little piece, which is a locking mechanism. So I can now turn that, and I'm actually putting a decent amount of pressure on there, and it's not moving. The filter holder is in exactly the same space as it was. So it's less likely for you to lose the spot of your graduated filter or your filter if you've got it in a specific angle. So that's a really, really nice little feature. So I'll put that away and I'm going to actually grab a six stop filter. So this is a six stop ND. Um, you can get 10, 15, 20. You can get the natural night filter, three stop, a variety of them. But just on this one, we've got the little foam protection around the edge. And I'm going to take the V5 for an example. So if you've been using the V5, you could probably relate to this. Slide your filter into that first slot so it's got a nice tight seal around the, um, around the edge of your filter holder. But if you've got another filter in the front, it's very, very hard, unless you've got incredibly thin fingers, and my mechanic fingers don't really do it, um, to push that down if you need to get it out. So I've had to adjust the grad filter that was on the front and then have to reset it, and I've even taken filters out. I've used another filter a couple of times to actually push one of these out and then push it down and then you have to pull it out. Now, for example, take the V6, because these corners have been shaved down or refined a little, we can put that same six stop filter in. It still has a perfect dark seal, probably even a better dark seal around the inside. But I'll take my grad filter again, put that straight in there. So the filter's a little bit dirty, but now you can see we've still got the corners sticking out, so you can actually push that down and then pull it from the base so you don't have to actually move this filter in front. So I can just pull that out straight from there. It makes it a whole lot easier and it's a really, really nice addition to the V5, or the V6 system, I should say. I don't want to scratch this, so I'll just put it away quickly. And I'll do the same with the six stop. And now let's talk polarizer. So I'll take this out of the filter holder and I'll screw the enhanced landscape CPL straight into the V6. So we've still got that same little scroll wheel that I told you about before. But now you won't be able to see this, but I'll overlay a little bit of footage where this section where the polarizer actually screws in has been raised ever so slightly. So you can't really see it. I can see it because I'm looking up close, but it's been raised ever so slightly. So people with bigger hands, you can get a better grip onto the actual polarizer. Whereas this one, you have to sort of stick your fingers in and it just, it just gets a little bit annoying if it's got some sand or salt or something in there that's making it stick because it makes it a lot harder to turn and get your circular polarizer filter out. So, I promised I'd come back to this, and that is the lens cap. So, let me take this, and comes a little resealable Ziploc bag. So I'll take that out, and now you can see the difference. So this one's, <laughs> this one's new, this one's beat up, because it's been around the world with me. Um, but what you'll see is the little pull tab, that's the biggest difference. Um, it's also got a little circumference part around it. So let's take the V5 and just slot that onto there. So that's how the Nissi lens cap sits on the V5. And if you need to get it off, you've got to get your fingers around and sort of give it a good yank, um, which 
depending on how strong you are or if you know the technique, I've personally had some customers that had them stuck on there and gave me a call and said, how do I get it off? So this system should be a whole lot easier. So now we have a nice neat seal that goes right the way around. And when this is on your lens, all you'll have to do is just pull it off because it's not on a lens, it's a bit trickier. All you've got to do is just pull it straight off and it makes it a whole lot easier to use the lens cap rather than um, sort of have to sit there and try and pull at it. It does get a little easier over time when it wears down a little bit, but when it's brand new, it's a bit sticky and um, this new design is much, much better. So what we're going to do now is go to a couple of different locations and actually put the V6 features to the test. Uh, there's a few ideas I've got in mind of different things that are happening around at the moment and hoping for a good sunrise or sunset in the next week or so. Just so I can showcase a little bit about that new locking feature which is really, really brilliant. And although some of these upgrades and features may seem small, they make a huge impact in the final result and user friendliness of the whole Nissi system. So it's a really, really great benefit. And what we're going to do now is head out to our first location. So let's get going. Getting the shot of the main ball. 
what I've done is sort of taken a step back, rock up a little bit here, and set up with these two small waterfalls looking directly up into the main one just so that it provides a bit of depth, a bit of scale, and will make for a really, really lovely shot. There's also a yellow leaf that's landed on a rock here, and um, conveniently enough it was already there, I didn't actually plant it. Um, but it does look really, really great, it adds just that nice little element to the photograph. So, I'm actually only set up using the Enhanced Landscape Polarizer here. The reason being is it's overcast today, there's a bit of spray around, and my shutter speed is already at two and a half seconds. But with this sort of water flow, I don't need it any slower, simply because it will still provide that little bit of detail while blurring the water and giving that really, really lovely, silky smooth effect. So you get the best of both worlds. I'm shooting at f11 to give me a reasonable depth of field, but also because I'm shooting and focusing so close on this rock in front to make sure it's sharp, I'm going to do a focus stack or a focus bracket to the uh, rocks in the background of the waterfall and make sure I get that sharp as well. And if need be, I can do a focus stack inside of Photoshop just to make sure that everything is razor sharp, tack sharp, and it turns out to be a beautiful image. Now, with the polarizer, it's the only filter you can't replicate inside of post-processing, which is huge. Uh, having it built into the filter holder and the Nissi V6 kit, same with the V5, it sits right on the end, end of the lens, meaning it's behind your primary filters. So if you've got a graduated filter or a plain ND filter, you can either have that on there, remove it, but still keep that polarization, which is a huge benefit and a really, really great filter. So what I'm going to do here is, I've actually wiped the lens before I put the lens cap on. I've got a composition set, and I'm going to do those couple of shots I've got ISO 200, which is the native ISO on this Fuji X-T2, two and a half second shutter speed, and F11 on my aperture. It'll give me a really beautiful silky effect. So, just with a lens block knife handy, there's a little bit of spray coming through. So, I'm just going to give that a quick wipe over. And I've got my cable release here. I'll focus on the leaf right in front, take that shot, and there we go, we've got our first image, which is really, really lovely. Now, you're seeing these images pop up with the polarization effect actually happening, and I've just focused on the background as well to take another shot. So you're seeing that with the polarization effect actually happening through the camera, on the photos, through the screen, and it's looking absolutely lovely. But what I'm going to do now is actually take off the polarization effect, take a shot in exact same settings, get the front element to wipe down, and take that photo. So exact same settings, two and a half seconds, F11, ISO 200, and the difference is absolutely huge. Um, like, the amount of polarization, the effect that this has, it cuts all the glare and reflection of non-metallic surfaces. So these wet rocks, all the glare from the overcast day, cloudy reflection, it's all getting cut out and the difference, the difference is absolutely amazing. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope you found it helpful and useful. I've really enjoyed shooting it for you and being able to test out, test run and try the Nissi V6. Um, the new lens cap is really handy as well. So if you'd like to purchase a Nissi V6, they are available for myself as a reseller and Nissi filters too. Um, they are a real great upgrade on the V5. They may only be small changes, but they make a big impact. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hit that like button, leave a comment down below, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.